today on Santa Monica Update. Can a parking lot be sexy? Okay, that's a stretch, but if you haven't parked at Santa Monica's newest parking lot, parking structure number six, you're missing an experience. Find out more on Santa Monica Update. Coming up next, the Santa Monica Police Department makes a small change, but with big symbolism. Want to spice up your Friday night? We'll show you how on Santa Monica Update. We have these fun, interesting, and important stories, along with more news about the city of Santa Monica in today's show. I'm Kina Chen. Santa Monica Update, your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Hello, everybody. The Santa Monica Police Department is currently investigating reports of senior citizen drivers being targeted as victims of an elder abuse scam. The scams involve one or two suspects who stage a minor traffic accident in a store parking lot involving the suspect's vehicle and the victim's vehicle. The suspects approach the victims as they are leaving the parking lot and claim that the victim hit their car. They then demand money saying that the damage is less than their insurance deductible. The suspects sometimes work as a pair and sometimes alone. They're described as a male and a female in their 40s who use a red four-door vehicle to stage their accidents. The Santa Monica Police Department is trying to locate other victims of this parking lot scam who may have paid but not reported the incident to the police. If you or someone you know has been targeted by this scam, please let the SMPD know. Contact Detective Dean Hodges. You can reach him at 310-458. 8928 or email him at sydney.hodges at smgov.net. The state of California has reached a final determination that our city does indeed own its parking structures. According to city manager Rod Gould, the state of California's Department of Finance has recognized the city's six parking structures as being rightfully owned by the city of Santa Monica. The city proved that redevelopment funds had not been used to construct the parking structures, and the state then recognized the city's ownership as valid. Santa Monica's eco-friendly parking structure number six is up and running. Not only does it add additional parking to the downtown area, but it also reduces traffic congestion. And it's the city of Santa Monica's most eco-friendly structure to date. Gail Choice has more. This is a brand new parking structure. Yay. You're one of the first six parkers ever to park here, and so you can park me all day. Yay! Congratulations! Thank you so much. Parking structure number six on 2nd Street in downtown Santa Monica is now in full operation. These lucky folks were the first to drive in and park anywhere they wanted. On December 19th, city officials cut the ribbon and celebrated opening the city's eco-friendly parking structure. This is a real multimodal center. The focus is on parking, but it's parking with a future. The electric vehicle charging stations, there are 30 of them now, I believe, but it, the infrastructure in this building is built so that as that grows, as that need grows, they can be put in so it can adapt to alternative fuel vehicles in the future. So again, this is a forward thinking building that's going to last us for many, many years. City officials pointed out that this new structure was a collaborative effort. It was a collective effort from everybody involved, so you know, I think we all should be proud of the work effort that we've done today. Simply put, it is a beautiful structure that freely celebrates the natural beauty of Santa Monica. This is probably one of the most attractive parking structures that I've ever seen. And I think it certainly, it certainly goes to, to number one on the city of Santa Monica list. It's a great looking building. If you look at the design, it's a very engaging design. If you, I can't wait to walk up the stairs to get the views from the stairs. And the design of it lets natural light into the building at all levels. Beauty aside, parking structure number six is a much needed addition to downtown Santa Monica. This parking structure on 2nd Street has 744 new spaces, which is 400 more than the parking structure that was here before. The parking structure will serve the community in a variety of ways. Also the nice thing about this is that it's going to have ground floor retail. A lot of our parking structures were built in the 1960s. I didn't think about pedestrian orientation at that time. And so there's these big parts of each block, they're sort of dead space. You look at cars, not very interesting. This structure has ground floor retail, so there'll be vibrancy, there's going to be outdoor dining and cafes, so when you're walking down 2nd Street, there's actually something to enjoy and to see. It also adds a 
vitality of the street, there's more light uh, on the sidewalk. It makes the whole area safer, more comfortable, and a, and a nice place to walk. Gail Choice, Santa Monica Update. Parking structure number six also accommodates bike riders with ground level bike racks that hold 72 bikes, in addition to the bike bollards on the second street sidewalk, which hold 40 bikes. For nearly a decade, the Santa Monica Police Department has been wearing the same badge on their uniform. But as the saying goes, out with the old and in with the new. Thanks to funds that were approved back in 2007, Chief Seabrooks and her team got the wheels back in motion and created a beautiful and colorful new badge that really does the city justice. The Santa Monica Police Department is going to have a brand new look soon, but this new look might not be as obvious as you think. It was in the late 1800s when the city of Santa Monica first established its police department, and along with it came the first ever Santa Monica police badge. To date, there's been 11 different badges, and as we usher in a new year, we welcome in badge number 12. This, the badge we wear currently is the first iteration of the badge in its shield form um, since 1983-84. Uh, it's the first time that City Hall has not been on the badge in, in that amount of time. So this represents an opportunity to go back in time just a little bit, to put City Hall back in the place where it belongs on our badge, but then to um, have the officers, that everyone in the department who wears a badge, to have that badge reflect our future as well. Well, the actual size of the badge is quite small, the meaning behind each element is quite large. When we look at what the badge is made up of, um, uh, the gold and silver, uh, the gold components representing uh, strength but uh, flexibility, uh, the silver components representing the purity of focus and uh, energy, and then the wreaths of laurel representing bravery and courage. I mean, you know, we can go on, but those are just some of the inherent symbols uh, represented in our badge, and all of those things speak to what it means to be a police officer in this town. Back in 2007, Genza, uh, Council Member Genza, he wanted to go back to the historical way of putting a city hall on a badge. and basically put in council, let's put aside $50,000 to provide a new badge for the department with City Hall on it. And today, Genzer's vision has come to fruition. Because of my previous history here in the organization, I wanted to see us return to a more traditionally appearing badge. But at the same time, I didn't want to go back in time. I wanted the badge to represent uh, something slightly different but at the same time restoring City Hall to its rightful place, which was the intent of Ken Genzer as well. While the money was set aside several years ago, it took some time to get the ball rolling. And once it did, not only was Ken Genzer's wish fulfilled, but those throughout the department were able to have their voices heard as well. We just started this process in October of 2012, and we started with a design. And we took the design based on City Hall's uh, new design. We did surveys internally when our first mock-ups uh, mock came in and got some very valuable feedback, which we incorporated into the badge design. And we tweaked and tweaked and tweaked. Um, my deputy chief and uh, our fiscal assistant, um, Ms. Neela Patel, really, really worked uh, with the badge company until we came up with an iteration that is what will be issued to the police officers. Next time you see a Santa Monica police officer and notice their colorful new badge, it'll be nice to know that they're honoring our city's rich history while looking ahead to our bright future. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Greg Goldner. It's truly amazing to see how the badges have changed over the years here in Santa Monica. You've really got to love it when you can honor a bit of the old school while giving something a modern and fresh new look. What could be better than cozying up to a nice fireplace for a relaxing evening? How about adding quality entertainment? Fireside at the Miles offers you an intimate evening with some of the best talent in Santa Monica and Southern California. Gail Choice has more on the entertainments to be found at Fireside at the Miles. This is my favorite time of year at the Miles. Uh, it's a time where the community can really come and get something that they can't get anywhere else and it's right here in Santa Monica. The mood is set and on this night, opening night, Fireside at the Miles presents Orchestra Santa Monica's Woodwind Quintet. I'm very proud of uh, the Orchestra Santa Monica Woodwind Quintet. They are a very important uh, ensemble from within our orchestra, and they do, at this point, the heavy lifting in our outreach programs. They play in schools, they play in community events, uh, they play in small community series such as this one. 
Oh, we love playing here. The fireplace is so warm and um, it's very cozy. The fire was a big part of this room. This, this building was completed in 1929. It's a lovely building. Most of the time, the auditorium that you see here is filled with risers, so you don't even notice the period fireplace or really the beautiful, gorgeous floors. So you're really just focused on the proscenium stage. We had a cancellation a few years ago, and instead of having the room dark, I said, why don't we do what they used to do in the 30s and 40s as I read about fireside concerts here at the Miles. So I opened up the space like you see, we lit the fire, we put, we put the quintet in front of it, and what do you know, people loved it. The cozy setting offers patrons a chance to enjoy the entertainment in such a way that it becomes personal for both the performer and the audience. And that is the goal of Fireside at the Miles. I wanted to switch it up. I kind of wanted to make it feel like you're coming into your living room. You know, this is your neighborhood, this is your theater, and when you come in here, I want you to relax, forget about the busy week you had, enjoy the fireplace, have some organic tea, and just kick it. From Tycho drummers, stand-up comedy, dance, and more, Fireside at the Miles is the place to be on Friday nights. The entire program is a really eclectic mix of different kinds of artists, everything from spoken word, to acapella singing, to the string quintet we have tonight, to opera, to comedy, to taiko drumming from Japan with the Own Ensemble, to String Theory doing an EP release, one of the best groups out here in, in Los Angeles. All of the information can be found on the website at milesplayhouse.org, but it's a really eclectic mix of wonderful artists, so you get something, something new every week. And yeah, we keep it incredibly affordable. It's $10 for adults, it's $5 for seniors, students, and 18 and under. And we keep it that way because we want it to be accessible. Gail Choice, Santa Monica Update. Fireside at the Miles runs through March 1st. For a complete listing of talent and to make reservations, go to milesplayhouse.org or email milesplayhouse at smgov.net. If you're driving along Ocean Avenue just south of the pier, you'll soon see construction going on. A raised landscape median will be installed along Ocean Avenue, extending from the intersection of the new Olympic Drive to Vicente Terrace. The median will improve the walkability of the street and increase safety for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. Once installed, the new median will create permanent access changes on Ocean Avenue. Construction will last approximately three to four weeks. During that time, expect lane closures in the area. After the median is finished, pedestrians will have two safe locations to cross Ocean Avenue. One crosswalk will be located at 1740 Ocean Avenue in front of the La Mergo Hotel. The second crosswalk will be at Ocean Avenue and the new Olympic Drive. For more info on planning and community development, please visit smgov.net slash pcd. Meet Russell and Oliver, Santa Monica's Pets of the Week. Check out cute Oliver. Oliver is a three-month-old male short-haired tabby kitten. He's come to the shelter a bit timid and bashful, but since he's come out of his shell and he's purring like crazy this morning, he's received all of his vaccinations and will be neutered and microchipped upon adoption. And this is Russell, a two-year-old neutered, gray and white domestic short hair. He's affectionate, well-adjusted, and great with other cats. He's received all of his vaccinations and will be microchipped upon adoption. If you're interested in either of these adorable cats or checking out other animals available for adoption, please visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter located at 1649th Street. There are also dogs and bunnies, turtles, and even a snake, all waiting for their forever homes. And just a reminder to get your dogs licensed. The 2014 renewals are now due. See you next time. To find more pets, visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter at 1640 9th Street. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. Please remember, when you're outside walking in our city, stay alert and be careful. I'm Kina Chin, speaking for all of us at City TV. Thanks for watching.